It's been a minute, but we're back in the Simpkin Physics Corner for some AP Physics Exam Review Torque Rotational Motion. This problem is something else. Let's take a look. We have two masses are connected by light cables to the perimeter of two cylinders. As shown in the diagram, the cylinders are rigidly connected to each other, so basically they all twist in one big glob there. But they're free to rotate. The moment of inertia of the pair of cylinders oops, is 45. And it says also R is 0.5 meters, so that's the little guy right here. And R2 is 1.5 meters, so that's the big old radius right there. And also gives us the mass of block one. First one, it says determine M2 such that the system will remain in equilibrium. So how much mass do we need on this guy in order to remain in equilibrium with the mass over here? Well, you can see mass one is exerting a torque at radius one. So I'm going to call this torque one. And that torque, you can see that the string is strung up and over the back side, if you will. And if we look at it kind of from this angle, following that axle that is put through, it would be um, counterclockwise relative to the axle. You also see that this string is wrapped over this way, the opposite direction. This would be causing a counterclockwise torque. And those two torques must be equal in order for this system to be in rotational equilibrium. So what are the forces? Well, the force on uh, pulley wheel one, if you will, is the FG on the block one times the radius of that wheel. And then it's going to be FG of block two times the radius, the outer radius, if you will. So that's M1GR1 equals M2GR2. Now we know all this other stuff. We know 20, we know 9.8, we know radius is 0.5. Again, that's referring to this inner radius of 0.5 meters. And then over here we have our unknown mass times 9.8 times a known radius of 1.5. So a pretty quick algebra problem here for a little 6.67 kilograms is the amount of mass you would need on M2 in order to put this system in rotational equilibrium, AKA balanced torques. Now, here's where things get interesting. The next part of the question is saying um, mass two is removed. So it's like adios, so the only thing acting on the system is M1 now, and that's of course an unbalanced torque. And it says, determine the angular acceleration of the cylinders. So our goal here, and this is going to be a big one, folks. Our goal here is to get alpha, the alpha. And so what do we know about alpha? Well, we know a torque causes an object of rotational inertia I to experience acceleration alpha. And so let's talk about what that torque is. That torque comes directly, if I kind of focus in, here's the inner radius, outer radius from a side view. It comes directly from actually the string. So the force exerting the torque is the force of tension times the inner radius equals the I times the alpha. I rearrange that, I get alpha equals um, FTR1 over, and then let me plug in for I, and this I is just gonna be a 45, so that's not gonna be that complicated. In fact, we know R as well, don't we? I'll just go ahead and plug that in while I'm at it. That's 0.5. But you notice we don't know FT and we don't know alpha, so we kinda get stuck. So what we have to do here is look at the block. Now, the big link for this is that the rotational acceleration of the uh, system here is going to be related to the tangential acceleration that's along the edge of this inner wheel. That tangential acceleration is going to be equal to the linear acceleration of the block moving downward. Okay, and the way that we tie these things together, no pun intended except it was because it's a string, is that A equals alpha R meters per second squared, radians per second squared times meters gets you meters per second squared. So the tangential acceleration, that means the rate of acceleration along the edge of a curve, that's going to be exactly the same as the rate of acceleration of the block falling. Why? Because the string is unwinding around the curve at the same rate that the string is falling or tied to the block is falling, right? But that, the issue is we still don't know FT. So what we have to do is also consider the linear motion of the block. Now the block has an upward force of tension, but a, also a downward force of gravity. And of course, you know the force of gravity is going to win because there's nothing to keep it from uh, falling, or you know it's, it, that's the only force that's acting is in that counterclockwise direction, or in this case, down for the block. Uh, but we do know that FG is going to be bigger than FT for the mass one experiencing a certain acceleration. And may say, well, it looks like we're getting further off the off the mark here. Well, not really. Look, we have M1G minus FT equals M1, and since we're asked to find the angular acceleration of the cylinders, I'm going to try to get this in terms of alpha. So come back over here to this identity, all the way on the left side. We know that uh, A is equal to alpha R. So let's see if that helps us. So I'm going to plug that in right here, alpha R. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. So 
Uh, what do we want to do here? I need to solve for alpha up here, and this is a pretty clean equation, right? The only thing I'm missing from there is force of tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for force of tension with my dynamics expression from the F equals MA, and then I'm going to plug that F, uh, FT solution in to the other expression that we have. All right, so first we're going to rearrange things to solve for FT. So FT comes over here. We add it to both sides. That's going to be equal to M1G minus, because it's positive over here. We've got to subtract it to the left side, so minus M1 alpha r, okay? Oh, and I actually don't have to go much further at all. I could plug that long expression in, or could I just solve it right here? Let's see if I can do that. We have 20, we have 9.8 minus 20 times, we can't do that yet because I don't know alpha, dang it. All right, yes, I want to keep my notations, of course. Sorry, my PowerPoint likes to skip around when I reach a threshold of writing too much in its own definition. So let's do this, let's clean this up here. I, I jumped the gun a little bit. I don't want to don't want to try to solve yet because I don't know enough information. So let me get rid of this, and we've got to go to our substitution step. All right, now it's not going to let me erase. That's fantastic. Let's see if we can just keep going. All right, just get rid of that. So here's what's happening. This is going in right here. So let's go ahead and drop that in. So what we see is alpha equals, all right, big old quantity here, uh, M1G minus M1 alpha R times 0.5 over 45. So that's just a substitution um, but from our solution from the dynamic piece. Now you'll notice here we have t alpha, we kind of have to dig it out of there a little bit. So we have like alpha equals uh, 0.5 M1G minus 0.5 M1 alpha R over 45. So let's start to move some things around here a little bit. I can multiply both sides by 45, I suppose. So 45 alpha equals 0.5 M1G minus 0.5 M1 alpha R. I got to get all the alphas to the same side, so I got to add this right here. So plus 0.5 M1 alpha R to both sides, plus 0.5 M1 alpha R. Get all the alphas together. What's that looking like? That's looking like uh, 45 plus, oh my goodness, got to love that. Ah. No, come back. There you go. Uh, 45 plus 0.5 M alpha R equals 0.5 M1 G. Okay, keep trucking. So this term has an alpha, this term has an alpha, so we're going we're gonna to get that out of there. So alpha times 45 plus, actually, do I know all this stuff? Yeah, I think I kind of do, because 0.5 is there, and then the mass is 20. And the R is, uh, is 0.5 still, okay? And all that is going to be equal to 0.5 times uh, 20 times 9.8. Good Lord, that was a long way home, but we got there. Okay, so 0.5 times 20 times 0.5, well, that's 5. And so in here we have 45 plus 5, so this is going to be 50 alpha equals 0.5 times 20 times 9.8. 98, and of course you just divide both sides by that 50, and our alpha is going to be 98 over 50, or 1.96 uh, radians per second squared. Good lord. Okay, so that is the solution. And I did this wrong first period, so if you guys are in the first period, pay attention. What I did in first period is a, a common mistake, and don't make the same one I did, okay? Here's what a lot of people want to do. They say, oh, well, there's only thing pulling is the FG, and so let's use FG up here. Uh, you can't do that, because the gravity isn't directly pulling on the, on the pulley. It's pulling on the block, which is tied to a string, but that would make the erroneous leap that FT is equal to FG. It's not. It can't be, because the block is going to fall. So that's why we had to do a little bit of extra, oh, sorry, wrong diagram. That's why we had to do a little black, <laughs> this is the wrong solution, by the way. Uh, this is why we had to do a little e extra legwork with all of this because the forces on the falling block were not balanced. They can't be because you're accelerating. All right, so finally, uh, determine the tension in the cable. So I'm going to look for my easiest um, equation that has FT in it. Here it is. All right, and I'm going to take that, and I'm just going to basically backtrack my solution for alpha into that. Okay, what does that mean? It means 1.96, that's alpha, equals FT times 0.5 over 45. So if you can algebra good, you can get the answer to that one. So let's see how that goes. 1.96 times 45 divided by 0.5. Looks like our force of tension acting on that is going to be 176.4 newtons. Solid.
that wasn't bad at all. And then finally, determine the linear speed of m1 at the time it has descended one meter. So basically here, we're just going to have to uh, do a little kinematic action. And so, man, boy, I'm running out of space here. Uh, the linear speed, so our, our y initial, we'll just call uh, zero meters. You know what, I'm not gonna call it zero meters because I want up to be positive. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, here's my block. It's falling like this, up is positive. Define our coordinate system there. And that means that y initial is one meter, which means y final is zero meters. It's gonna fall one meter there. Our acceleration in the y direction, now this is where it's a little tricky, but, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I wanna keep it, thank you. I'm not doing all this for nothing. Uh, there it is. Sorry about the delay there, folks. Come on. Oh my goodness. You are the worst. There it goes. Uh, AY is going to be related to alpha, but not equal to it. We know that A is equal to alpha R. So that number is going to be 1.96 times the radius, which is 0 0.5. So that our alpha, or, or sorry, our AY is going to be 0 0.98 meters per second squared. Also, our V initial Y is equal to zero meters per second. And so from this point on, it's just a kinematics problem, which I hope I can say you guys are all pretty good at. So when it says what's the linear speed after uh, after one meter, all you'd be solving for is v uh, vy or the, the final y velocity there. So um, just looking at what we have there, that would be the expression vy squared equals v initial y squared plus two uh, ay delta y would be the appropriate uh, kinematic equation to select there. Since V initial is at zero, we were at rest. All we got to do is two times 0.98 times delta Y, which is one. Take the square root of both sides. That's a very uninter uninteresting answer of VY equals 1.4 meters per second. All right, so there you go. There you have it. Sorry I did it wrong the first time. Don't get played like Mr. Simpkins. Over here, I was like, oh, hey, look at this. These forces are balanced. Silly Simpkins, you can't say that. Uh, so this, this initial A uh, solution was wrong because as you can see right here, here's the error, right? I used FG as the force directly exerted on the pulley. It's not directly exerted on the pulley. FG causes there to be some tension, but not an equal amount upwards. And so this is the correct solution. Whoa, that looks really crazy right now. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll catch you next time as we get ready for AP Physics 1 exam coming up May 5th. Mr. Simpkins in the Simpkins Physics Corner. Make sure you like, sub, hit the notification bell, and uh, leave a comment. Maybe uh, leave enough comments. Maybe we'll get the t-shirts going in the merch store. We'll see what happens. Till next time, take it easy.